Hey everybody, happy Friday to you. Thanks for navigating with me through this book of Revelation and through the New Testament this year. It's been, it's been incredible to get your comments and input and feedback and uh, just to know that people are joining me in this study through the Bible. Hey, we are in Revelation 13. Yesterday, I mean, none of these subjects are pleasant, are they? <laughs> Who wants to talk about Satan? I want to talk about Jesus. But we get these pictures of yesterday and today in Revelation 12 and 13 so that we are not fooled by what happens in the world around us. Revelation 12, we saw the holy war that's been happening since the beginning and what, and what God is doing against that and what he wants us to do to count on the blood of Jesus that was paid for our sins. Count on that forgiveness. Count on his testimony of his word that tells us how to live. You count on those things and you'll overcome the dragon. Today, you see the rest of his plan. So in Revelation 13, what I'm calling this theme is the untrinity. There's a trinity, you know that, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father created the world, established the, the plan over the world, and then Son who came as our uh, Messiah, our Savior, to save us, to be one of us, and then to save us from our sin. And then the Holy Spirit that comes after Jesus to fill us with his spirit so we can become the image and the likeness of God that he originally intended. All three of those are the Trinity. They're all God, they're connected as God, and they're individually a part of what overall God is doing. Well, Satan, the great imitator, tries to come up with the same thing. So that's what you're seeing in chapter 13. We saw the dragon yesterday. That's Satan. That's the imitator of God. He wants to be God so bad that he tries to do the things that God does. So he thinks he's king. He wants rule. He wants control over all creation. He, he thinks he can convince and coerce us into doing exactly what he wants us to do. That's not how God works. That's how Satan works. And then today we see two more show up, the beast of the sea and the beast of the earth. The beast of the sea is like Antichrist. Uh, verse 8 of chapter 13 says, The beast was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. This beast shows up out of the sea. What that means, hard to tell. Maybe out of water, out of life, or maybe physically out of an island or out of an area. Who knows? And he accepts worship from people. That should be bang, ding, 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 ding. That's an obvious sign of the Antichrist, the, the person who wants to imitate and distract people from Jesus. So this beast of the sea, the fatal wound on his head, and the charismatic leader that he is, the clever politician that he becomes, the powerful person that he has, he's given power and authority over the world from the dragon, and he becomes the Antichrist, the fake Christ. And he accepts worship from people and commands worship as a, as a response of all people, which the saints won't do because they already know who the Christ is. And this one is not it. And then you see after that the false prophet that shows up. This is the imitator of the Holy Spirit, the beast of the earth. He, he makes signs and wonders to point to, to point to the Antichrist as the so-called Christ, the Messiah. And he has this mark of humanity and an indwelling that he gives to people and he, as a way of communicating that, hey, you're part of us if you have this mark, this, this sign, this number on you. Just like Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit, they give you this mark. And he tries to control worship by controlling the economy and controlling life. And none of it's going to work because they're imitations. I mean, you know this, when you buy something that looks like the original but doesn't work or doesn't, isn't designed or doesn't have the same makeup or the same elements to it, it's not the same. <laughs> the original is the perfection. So I just want you to hear that there's this untrinity that tries to distract us. And don't expect it to just be in human form. It can come in lots of ways, a system, a process, a, a financial uh, windfall, all kinds of things to get us to be distracted from Jesus as our Christ. Remember what John and Paul and others wrote in the scriptures. You, John said it this way, you can know who the false teachers are. You can know if it's an antichrist. Here's how you know. Will they profess Jesus as Lord? Every spirit who confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And you can count on the fact these will not do that. Because if they confess Jesus as Lord, they have to surrender to him. 
Friends, I'm encouraging you today to watch out for those things around you that try to steal the Lordship of Jesus. They may do miraculous signs. They, they may speak incredible words. They may teach you some amazing things. But if Jesus is not Lord to them, then they are not from God. That's the lesson here in chapter 13. Watch out for the untrinity. God bless you as you continue in your study. And uh, I pray that you have a good weekend and stay healthy and safe. I know this Christmas is not like anything we've ever experienced, but Jesus still came and we still celebrate the birth and we glorify him because he chose to leave heaven to come to earth to surrender his life as a sacrifice for our sins. We have a lot to be thankful for. We have a great reason to celebrate our Christmas and I encourage you to keep doing that as we get closer to that day. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Monday.